What's up, nerds? Today, I'm looking at the RetroQ Bluetooth speaker by... But is it worth it? Let's find out together. one of my favorite third-party manufacturing controllers. Recently, we looked at the 8-Bit2 arcade stick, and I've been wanting to do a review of the N30 Pro controller, but... <clears throat> my dog... But my dog peed on mine, uh, and I've been too afraid to take it out of the rice because I don't think it's going to work. But as soon as I get another one, I promise... We'll take a look at it. It was awesome while it lasted. 8-Bit Do is probably known best for their retro-themed aesthetics. Just taking a look at the Retro Cube, you can see that it's based heavily off of the NES. On the very top of the speaker, there's a D-pad. Pushing up turns the system on and off. Left and right double as a volume up and volume down as well as a skip forward and skip backwards and hitting down will either play or pause your audio selection. On all four sides are red speaker grills that look like A and B buttons on the original NES controller and of course it's a cube and the edges are reminiscent of the NES's controller design. And on the back, of course, we have a mini USB port for charging with a power indicator light next to that, a Bluetooth light that stays solid blue when it's connected, flashes blue when it's searching, and of course, an aux in port just in case you don't want to use the Bluetooth. On the bottom, you'll find some legal jargon, some FCC stuff, and four rubberized feet that help it to stay in place. When I originally bought this, I bought it for my car, um, and the rubberized feet were really great for just sticking it on top of my dashboard and letting it sit there while I was in traffic, and it wouldn't go anywhere. That was really nice. Now, in the package, it did come with a USB and an aux cable, uh, but I went ahead and threw those away because those were just kind of cheap, generic cables, which is really disappointing because the controller came with this nice, gray branded USB cable. Um, and I guess they just didn't care enough to throw it in with this, um, but really any cable will charge it, and now that my controller's dead, I guess, uh, yeah, got a new, brand new nice controller. The, the build quality of this thing is pretty solid. Um, of course it's made of plastic all around, the button's plastic, the housing's plastic, with the exception of the speaker grill, those are a, uh, metal, I don't know what the metal is, but it's definitely metal, probably a nickel. Um, and of course the rubberized feet on the bottom. The D-pad has a nice response uh, and a gentle bounce back after you push it down. It's really nice to have uh, that tactile feedback to know that you pressed in the button and given the cube the command to turn on, pause play, whatever it might be. And even though I've dropped this a couple times, I don't feel like it's fragile. Obviously it's plastic and it might break. But again, the build quality is solid, and it's a, it's a decent plastic that feels very much like the plastic they use in the controllers. Um, and it just feels good in the hand. It doesn't feel like it's a No, of course, the real question here is how does it sound? Pretty darn good. An X input to D input, and an XY to D pad switch. A turbo button, the pair button, which will be important when you're trying to pair the NES30 arcade stick with a device. And of course a select. And a big old start button. The joystick and the buttons have a nice... Um, it's definitely loud enough to fill a small room. Uh, and even like I said, my car. So it's really great for the commute, uh, maybe your office. And if it's close enough to you, sure, it might provide some good sound while you're outside. Now the sounds that come out of this are nice and crisp, whether you're listening to music or something dialogue heavy, like a podcast. Um, and it's definitely loud enough to fill a small room, so if you want to listen to an audiobook or something of that nature, like while you're cleaning, 
or while you're doing something like that, it's definitely going to be louder than your phone and fill more of the room that you're in. One thing to keep in mind that this isn't the biggest speaker in the world, so you need to keep your expectations in check. This is going to be good for, say, music, like background music, or like, like I said, when you're at home cleaning by yourself. But if you're trying to have a party with a lot of friends over, I know, what are friends? And this might not be adequate to fill that environment, but it's still a really nice addition to fill a quiet room with audio, or like I said, your car, or even just to sit on your desk as a, uh, as a conversation starter. You know, I would put this speaker uh, in the same category as the uh, JBL Clip, and while the JBL Clip is definitely better uh, on the audio quality side of things, I would say that the A50 is absolutely kicking its butt as far as aesthetics go. Now, 852 does sell a red and blue twin pack that is obviously uh, Switch themed. And those two actually daisy chain their Bluetooth, so they play in stereo over Bluetooth. However, I haven't heard the greatest things about that one, so I can't really be sure or recommend it if you are looking for a stereo Bluetooth solution, only because I haven't tried it out, nor have I read good things about it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you got any value. Also, if you're planning on getting one of these, go ahead and check the links in the description below. I also love links to the dual pack down there just in case you do want to pick that one up um, in the comments below let me know if you plan on picking up this speaker or if you already have the speaker or even if you can verify whether or not there's a latency between the bluetooth connection of the twin pack don't forget to tune in next time where we're going to take a look at some more nerdy knickknacks and geeky gear the best that the internet has to offer thank you so much again and have a good one